After the trucker convoy, Canadian Pat King was put in jail for 150 days under the Trudeau government and was stripped of all capabilities of banking and therefore his capabilities of earning a living. He currently remains on some of the most stringent bail conditions in Canadian history. This could happen to any Canadian, especially if this president's setting case of his is not one. What's stopping the government from going after any other freedom-loving Canadian who attended a peaceful protest? What are these so-called charges against Pat King? I get to speak with this man tonight, and the conversation starts now. I promise you, I will not let you down. The trucks parked outside illegally should move. Canada's Conservatives will meet our Paris climate commitment. Enough with the woke <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, I take that back. To champion our conservative principles. We are the party of law and order. To call in the auditors. We haven't yet decided whether we're going to call for the government to impose a mandatory test or vaccination. And we will win the next election. Canada must not ignore the reality of climate change. Why weren't Canadians vaccinated in January and February like everyone else? Welcome, everybody, to Controlled Opposition, episode 26. I'm Greg Wycliffe, and tonight I'm joined with a very, very special guest. You know... Whatever you think about this guy, it's going to depend on who you heard it from, really. Did you hear it about from the CBC or did you hear it from a fellow patriot? It's man who really needs no introduction. It's the one and only Pat King. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm good, Greg. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. No problem. You know, um, there's a lot of uh, dissidents dealing with so much nonsense in this country and no one seems to be talking about it in the mainstream, not even our so-called freedom-loving conservatives. Um, and I think it's really important to put a spotlight, a big spotlight, on individuals like yourself because you if it's not you, then it's going to be me next or somebody else next. You know, right. And, and yeah. I, I really need to drive that home for people. But um, yeah, we'll be one, going. Yeah, go ahead. One thing, one thing we do got to say, though, ladies and gentlemen, this is for fundraising purposes. Um, if you can donate to my lawyer, that's the only way I'm allowed on social media. Unlike uh, Mr. Gary Cloutier and your comments there, uh, Gary and I go way back. He's a mouthpiece, lives in a van down by the river kind of kind of guy. So uh, this is for fundraising purposes. All donations can go to my lawyer at natasha.calvino at gmail.com. And then also we've got our event here, which is brokenarrowbullsandbash.com. That is available for anybody who wants to come and have one heck of a weekend. We're actually two weeks away from that rodeo event, and it's going to be one hell of a weekend for everybody to come. If you can't come, you can also donate uh, Pay It Forward tickets, and we draw weekly on my podcast to bring uh, people in your honor. So if you can't make it, you can still purchase a ticket, then we draw for people, and then they can still come. As well as we've got a free giveaway for a $25,000 jacuzzi. Uh, with the purchase of a uh, bumper sticker, which will be available for you as well, donated by R&D Plumbing and Heating out of Lloyd Minister. So it's going to be one heck of an event. Sorry to interrupt that. I have to put that out in the first because, uh, like everybody knows, I'm only allowed on social media for the purposes of fundraising. And that's what we're here. We're here to talk about what's going on. I'll give you guys some information of what I can and can't say or what I can and can't do. And then that being said, uh, let, let's fire it off, Greg. I'm, I'm ready to give it that final shovel in the, in, in the graveyard, right? Like I want to put that final load of dirt on top of the tomb and, and close this book forever and start getting on with the real facts and getting people to understand what is going on for real in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that you can't because you're almost speaking cryptically right now, unfortunately, because you have to legally. And I think what you're alluding to, in in my opinion, is um, the dust has not settled since the trucker convoy, guys. Oh, by yeah. no means, no. 
Not there's a, there's close. a there's a lot going on, and I think there's going to be a revenge of the dissidents, if you will, a revenge of the patriots, where uh, yourself, people like Jeremy McKenzie, people like Archer Bavlowski, and others who have been so unfairly persecuted by the legal system, by the the law enforcement, by potentially government officials, and uh, as Justin Trudeau once said, there will be consequences. Oh, okay, th- there will be consequences. We were expecting consequences when he said that, and uh, right from the right from the horse's ass's mouth, I guess is the way I want to mm-hmm. say it. But uh, um, the consequences are unjust. We all know this. Yep. Uh, having that freedom of expression and freedom of opinion should be everybody's God-given, alienable right, in Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, and and here here's a pr- prime example of it. I've been silenced for almost two years. I'm not allowed to talk about anything. I'm not allowed to say anything to anybody. And then when yep. they do give you that opportunity, because they're they're admitting that my bank accounts are still frozen almost two years later, folks. My, my bank accounts are still frozen, so I have no means of doing any financial transactions with mm-hmm. the Bank of Canada. All my, all my money, my investments, all my savings and everything is frozen, and it, I can't touch it. So I have only means that I can do is don't get donations to help my lawyer. And it, everything goes to my lawyer. None of this comes to me. It all gets emailed to my lawyer. So for those that are wanting to say grifter and shit like that, talk to my lawyer. You'll get your receipt. Feel free. <laughs> stop, stop it. Like this is going directly to the lawyer. She gives everybody a receipt. She's got to be 100% factual with the mm-hmm. crown because the crown is monitoring all the monies. And uh, if you're afraid to have your, your bank account seized because you're donating to this, you can't. This is uh, in court order. So this, they can't freeze your bank accounts, ladies and gentlemen. So for those that might be a little interested in that one, some people were worried thinking their bank accounts would get frozen. <laughs> I mean, it's it's it would seem like a totally irrational fear a few years ago, but now it's unfortunately a thing that just happens. And it always happens to be someone who is like right wing or, you know, concerned about what the government's doing basically. But let's back up a bit because I don't know if everyone does know your story, Pat. And I do kind of want to go over uh, because you're almost kind of made to be like the the mascot of the convoy by the uh, by the media, right? Like they had all these lies to go with the convoy, and then they the had all these. Man. You're the boogeyman, yeah, the boogeyman mascot. But yeah. let, let's back it up just so people know. And I and I want to plug the uh, fundraiser one more time before we kind of get into this conversation here. Absolutely. What what are the official what's the official on paper charges that you're up against? Don't go in detail because we don't want to get stuck in all the legalese. But like you know what what is on paper? Um, so there's there's a total of fourteen charges uh, right down to obstruction of justice. Um, but most the main ones are mischief, counseling to commit mischief, perjury, obstruction of justice, counseling to disobey a court order, and counseling to obstruct police. Um, that's, that's, uh, for anybody who wants to go read the Wikipedia, it's all up there. Some little troll went and figured they knew everything about me and they put the Wikipedia up, but uh, those are the main charges. Uh, I'm sure they're going to try and slap more, throw more at the wall and see if it'll stick. But, uh, for, for right now, nothing, uh, same with, uh, my conditions that I'm under on bail conditions. They're absolutely horrendous. Uh, I've got 10 o'clock curfew. I'm not allowed to leave my house after yep. 10 o'clock unless I'm with my surety. Um, I have to be available for door knocks at any time of night after 10 o'clock. So they come knock on your door, rap on your door, get you, uh, you know, into making sure you're, you're, you're home every night, Mr. King. And, yeah. That's uh, not, it's not invasive at all. No. And they do, they pound on the door. Like it's a rock concert. Like they're going to kick the door open. They've been caught strobing, uh, the, the flashlights through the windows and making it look like there's a, you know, a rock concert going into my house. They've even gone as far as flashing it into my neighbor's house. While they were watching a movie one night at like 1 30 in the morning really my neighbors thought they were getting broken into and then they saw that it was cops wow so how many times would you say just now that we're talking about it like over a year and a half it, i guess it's been how many times have the cops stopped by to knock give you a uh, at least door? four times four to five times a month okay. for sure for sure okay for Interesting. sure when i first got home it was every night mm-hmm. um for the first like three months yep but it, they tapered off a little bit. And some of the officers are understanding. They know what's going on. Um, right. We're over a year now on these conditions, and I haven't breached yet. So uh, to all the haters out there. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Yeah. Good. Um, and, yeah, I, I mentioned in the intro, these are some of the most – or the most stringent bail conditions uh, in Canadian history, potentially. Um, and people need to realize, you know, this could be a precedent case. 
the whole convoy could be a president case. And, you know, it, it, it would be like, oh, talking about mandates, you know, using a truck to protest or whatever it is. It's like, okay, now that's like mischief. That's counseling yeah. to commit mischief, which is everyone should be livid at if you believe that we live in a democratic society, right? Like we're in a democratic society, you're supposed to be able to protest freely and openly without being molested and harassed by law enforcement and the government. But now they're trying to say, no, 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 no. If you're protesting about something we don't like, you can totally riot about BLM as much as you want. But if you protest something we don't like, oh no, that's, that's mischief. Oh, and if you talk about it, that's counseling to commit mischief and all this counseling, counseling, counseling stuff, which is essentially having the wrong opinion or encouraging somebody to take a, an action of activism. That might be oversimplifying it, but I know you have a whole bunch of restrictions on what you can and can't say, but I just want to emphasize to the viewers that, yeah. you know, if this case, if Pat's case does not go the right way, then it sets a terrible, terrible, ter terrible president for everybody else in this country. <clears throat> and especially if you're a more conservative, freedom minded, anti globalist type person. So before we get into the conversation, you can help support Pat King and help him win this case. Uh, two things, if you're in Alberta, like you said, you can go to this amazing fundraiser near Red Deer. Um, the website is brokenarrowbullsandbash.com. He was talking about it earlier. Or you can send a direct e-transfer to Pat King's lawyer at this email, natasha.calvinho at gmail.com. And the password for the direct deposit is Ottawa. All that information is in the YouTube description down below. Now, let's uh, let's get into it here, Pat. Let's get into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I'm I've been waiting for this one. Uh I see some of my biggest biggest fans are in your chat room. Is, so uh I, trolls? Biggest trolls? Oh, absolutely. Nice. And you know what the best part is? The trolls that are in there, they're all yep. people I called out at one time. So sit back, grab your popcorn cuz we're going to call you out again for it and you'll know who they are. And these people are exactly people who thought they had some kind of role in this and then they got butt hurt because they got called out for you know their wife abuse or their you know, assaulting elders kind of stuff. And uh, some people in here is trying to pass off rumors that they want to keep saying, this is the whole point of being in here. This is the whole point of being on controlled opposition because right. we're going to set this to rest for the last time. We're going to put the dirt on the last, the last shovel full on it. And then that's it. People either get behind this or they step aside and get out of the way. Mm -hmm. These charges are super, super important for the rest of Canadians for what we're going up against. This will limit and hinder, if not omit, any ability to be able to peacefully assemble or, um, you know, peaceful to pro or pro um, your right to peaceful protest. Um, these will set it up for the future of your children. Now, did we know this was going to happen when we came here? Not a chance. We had no idea when this happened, when this was going on, um, that we were going to get even get charged because we followed under you know, your Canadian rights and charter or rights and freedoms. And we followed it to the letter. There was no mm -hmm. violence, no nothing. And this is what we got slapped with. I think what you'll find is, um, is I think we, we scared some people. I think we offended some people too. And they, those people that we scared and, and got offended, uh, they have a lot of power and they, mm. they wielded that sword and they cut it down on every single one of us. And it was un unbelievably, peaceful and beautiful and everything that we did and and the and the canadian support behind it i thank everybody out there for their support for everything uh, and the ones that stood on the side of the roads you were the ones that kept pushing us to go and uh and it was them that really really fought this battle yeah we took some hits we're in the courts now but we had to expose this injustice we had to show everybody that this judicial system is weaponized against the canadian citizens it is not in our favor and it's the administration for the corporation of Canada. And all they're doing is trying to funnel money, 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 money. And that's why lawyers are so expensive. And this is where we're at. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care who you are, Ryan, Gary, all you guys, if this was you in, in this position, I'd be doing everything I could to fight for you guys. And you know it. And that's why you're so butthurt because I'm such a better person than you guys. And, and they know that even if Antifa was in this situation or BLM members were in this situation, where they were jailed wrongfully, they were slapped with conditions, un unbelievable conditions, and then their bank accounts taken away, I'd be advocating for them too. I'd mm. be advocating for every friggin' person out there. And that's the problem with some people is, is I, I go, I, I stand for everybody. I'm not, 
I'm not a person to cause bullshit. I'm not a person to start shit. I, I just cancel you out the way you guys cancel us out. Yeah. And not, and not only that, Pat, um, I'm sure there's examples in the States anyway of politicians coming to the defense of Antifa when they get charged for like violent things, you know? So, uh, where, Hey, where are the conserv? Hey, Hey, uh, Canadian conservative, uh, party, you know, where are you guys? Are you going to say, well, I can, for us? I can give you nothing. a little tip of where they're at. And, and this, this is, I've, I've attempted to have meetings with my MLAs. Okay. Um, she's avoided me for over 18 months. Um, I've met my federal MP, but he was too afraid to put my name in the papers to say that I was a, in a meeting there because if they found out that I was talking to my MP, he could be fired. So mm -hmm. they're getting a threat down uh, from the top that they're not even allowed to voice or help any of us for what mm -hmm. we're doing. Pierre yeah. Pauly, I've looked at my mother-in-law and straight up told him we're not allowed to get involved in the criminal matters. Well, this isn't oh, criminal. Oh my God. Wait, what? Your yep. mother-in-law? My mother-in-law confronted Pierre Polyev in Sudbury uh, while I was still in jail in Ottawa. And she was trying to advocate for me. And they were giving uh, letters of um, people had, had wrote letters of distinction for me to, to, you know, kind of smooth the waters with the crown. And they approached uh, Pierre Polyev and they said, right on camera, are you, what do you think? You got Pat King and George Billings all in jail for, for exercising their freedom to protest. And, uh, and now you've got, uh, you know, you, you, you're you not helping them. You say you're there for the people and you're not. And he says, oh, we're not allowed to get involved in criminal matters. This isn't criminal. This is tyrannical. This isn't criminal, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is exactly what they do in China, North Korea. This is what they do in all those communist countries. You say too much, you go to jail. I thought I was going to get Julian Assange. I thought I was going to get thrown away, uh, thrown, locked up and they throw the key away. I mean, it's, it's I didn't, man, it's, uh, I mean, I was only put on a list and associated with like Randy Hillier when he got his charges, but that was enough for me to get all squirrel brained. I can't even imagine what it's like for you guys actually going to prison and being like, what happens next? What did I even do wrong? So like, you know, feeling like you might be Julian Assange, like, you know, I could, I could, I said this before, but unfortunately when this stuff starts to happen, we always warn people about the communism, right? But when it starts to happen, it just gives so much oxygen to the paranoia in your mind. Cause it's like, oh, 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 I, I guess there's no rules anymore. You know, it's, uh, so I, I do, I don't feel it to, to, to the extent that you have, but like, I do feel you a little bit in terms of like, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy where your mind goes and, and you know, you know, it's who's to say it's out of the realm of possibility, but I do want to talk about, um, actually, you know what, let's play a quick clip. Okay. Because you know, criminal matters all this nonsense there's a great clip of you from the trucker convoy um and you kind of really bring it into perspective of how how beautiful uh this country is and how beautiful the convoy was so let's play that clip here this is a global thing canada just took the reins because that's what we're known as canada is a group of peacekeeping people we've always been peaceful we've gone into every country we help them build their infrastructure we our military has always been a peacekeeping military and now you're seeing Canadians do it just like it's supposed to be done, peacefully. Now, if that has sparked and ignited the flow across the world, that's because our beautiful hearts and our beautiful minds as Canadians is what got that going. We are peace-loving people, but we can't stand to watch this terrorize our countries anymore. We can't watch this, these governments in their political overreach continuously, nonstop, just take and take and take without the people getting the, our voices heard. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. I mean, what you said right there is 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 more passionate and compelling than what most conservative MPs say. And it's there's this clear pattern that the people like yourself, people like Jeremy McKenzie or Archer Pawlowski, you guys are charismatic, passionate speakers who speak with conviction about, you know, what's really going on in this country. And isn't it interesting that you are targeted by the current liberal government and completely ignored and called criminals? by the conservative party, the official opposition. You know, like, right. like the pattern is so obvious and painful. And that is the whole point of the show is to especially let people know, hey, this, this conservative party that you think is fighting for you, they're not. They're actually like the final blow of like covering up the whole story and, and crushing down like our best people who, who are, you know, patriotic and actually trying to help this place, help this country. Absolutely. And, um, and that every word that I said there is exactly how I felt the whole time. Uh, I do got to add this in, guys, ladies and gentlemen. This is for fundraising purposes. If you can help, anything can help. 
Uh, but if you can't, you can still share it out, and that's all that we, we ask for. Thanks to everybody who's helping out, but you can donate to natasha.calvino at gmail.com. And, uh, and thanks for everybody's support. And just share it out even. Uh, maybe it'll get to the right people, and, and they'll be able to help out. But I appreciate everybody's efforts. Um, this is, uh, I don't even know where. How, how, do you, how do you unwrap something that was so absolutely beautiful and wonderful that we all know about? And unwrap it to the way that it was portrayed to the media is beyond me. This is the only the only expression I can I could say, and we've said this a lot, but this is when you look at it in contrast, this is an absolute battle against good and evil. That was nothing but Woodstock. It was great to see people's lives coming back. It was great to hear the stories from people around Canada that had, you know, convened and, and met on the streets with each other. Um, the tears, the hugs, the laughs, the dances, everything. It was beautiful. And to have it smeared in the way... So that that video clip that you showed never did make it to the air. That is an actual news broadcast. Of the, I believe you said it was the NBC. Uh, I couldn't remember who the reporter was, but it was a big-name reporting company, and they never put it out. Yeah. So it was it was a moment where we thought we were going to get that 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 rainbow that we needed that everybody could see it in the light and and we didn't so when the government comes in with their you know with their gavel and they, and they come in with their you know their uh their jack boots as they were caught saying on a whatsapp um yep whatsapp well, comment their their <laughs> horse hooves and their the horse uh, hooves, yeah. they're like riot gear yeah yeah and they, and, they, and they trampled on it that was all optics and intentional that was for them to crush everybody's hopes and then after they crushed everybody, everybody's hopes, they went after the people that were bringing you the hope and they're trying to crush them as well. But not only that, I do feel that this is, this is setting a precedent across the nation that in the future, when these 15 minute cities and all that kind of stuff get, get implemented, that when you start to speak up, you're not going to be able to, they're going to stomp you with those jack boots again. They're going to get on you again. And, uh, and it's going to be brutal. And I think it's going to even just get worse to the point that they just pick you up off the ground. Uh, like, well, where you're standing and throw you in the clink and buy, you go to the gulag, right? You go to, you go to the Russian prison and never come back and never to be seen again. Yeah. And it's like what happened during the COVID lockdowns, except over a kind of a longer period of time, like dur during the COVID lockdowns, it was like slowly, but surely, okay, you're staying inside, you're wearing your mask, you're doing all these habits, but with something like the convoy and a protest movement, it's like, oh, oh, if, if you say the wrong thing, if you stand up against the government, you just get messed with and you get charged and you have to deal with all these legal battles and, and you get thrown in jail and you get ostracized uh, by your peers because in the media, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, if we get used to that, then we're going to have to start living with that. So that, that's why it's like, guys, the, the dust has not settled from the trucker convoy, far from it. And if we don't continue to bring it back to this, especially with this fake opposition party, then oh. we're going to start to slowly accept, um, you know, political prisoners being a thing. We're going to start to slowly accept this sort of um, dissidents being persecuted. And it's like, that's not, a, that's not a part of my language. But guys, if that's happening, it's not a fucking free country anymore, is it? It's not. No, it's not. It's not. It's and, and we've gotten past that veil now to show you that it's not a free country. Our rights have been gifted to us here in Canada. We've never had to fight for them. And, and this that. is the first time in Canadian history where you're actually fighting for your rights now. Mm -hmm. and, and this is people actually having a voice again. We were the voiceless. We were yeah. the ones that went to work and we never talked about anything. And we just did our shit, paid our taxes, did what the government asked us to do. I paid 48% tax bracket in the oil field for over 11 years when I was working steady. Um, and I never complained. I just paid my bills, kept the roof over my head, and I kept going to work. And that's what sure. we did. Mm -hmm. And then when they started to attack us out here in the oil field, in the oil industry, that's when I got a little bit more boisterous. Um, I always knew that it was messed up. I've known back since 9-11. I've known that that was all a false flag and everything about that. I researched the hell out of it. And I actually had to calm myself down after a while, take a little bit of a break, because I couldn't believe that this world was exactly what it was, that what I was seeing was actually truth and, mm -hmm. and what they are capable of doing. And then you go down rabbit hole after rabbit hole. Well, it got to be enough is enough for the Canadian people. And, and they needed that, that voice. I was 
I was there. I was there to do what I had to do to try and wake people up. I toured around Canada. I traveled. I held town hall meetings in, in every city on the way to Ottawa. I, this, I this, was, this was leading up to the convoy? Yeah, this was back yeah. in 2018, 2019. Oh, even, um, even before, a, even before, like the, the COVID really hit. Absolutely, we we did uh, a, a small uh, oil and gas convoy to Ottawa back in February 2019. United and we roll. We that, yeah, the United we roll convoy. That's right. That's right. And uh, we spearheaded that one, and we actually had the politicians come out and talk to us, and they said, "Okay, we hear what you're saying. We're going to do what we can." And two days after returning, they they dropped the lift. They dropped the mandates on our pipelines out here. And we were able to get our our projects back going. So it was successful in that in that pursuit, and mm-hmm. then and then they just came down with the with the with the jackboots uh, after that, and mm-hmm. kept hindering and kept doing everything they could to to basically turn Canada into a bankrupt, impoverished country. And we're seeing it because this oil and gas industry, as much as people want to say, uh, you know, more environment, more green, I understand that, but we are more susceptible with this, in, or we are more. Um, um how's the word i'm looking for we are more dominant in the oil and gas industry for a reason that's our basic our bread and butter in canada that's how Mm -hmm. we keep this country prosperous that's how we pay all the equalization payments we pay to every province out there so that you've got a welfare system you've got a you know you've got a uh your benefit programs that you have in all your provinces most of those come from alberta equalization payments so whether you work here or not we need to keep Alberta prosperous. We need to keep it going. We need to keep it working. And now the government, they're supposed to have your best interests at heart. And they mm-hmm. don't. Because now, not only are they hindering you by taxes, ex- excessive taxing, excessive uh, representation without uh, overtaxation, taxation without representation, sorry, and, and no say. Well, now it's time we got to speak up, ladies and gentlemen. And everybody has a voice, use it. And we exercise that. And this is what we get for it. Not only is this what we get for it, we try to help other people. We, you know, we, even in these movements, you know, we, we help people and then you burn your bridges and then you sit in chat rooms that like you're all butt hurt because somebody hurt your feelings. You're acting exactly like Justin Trudeau did when, when he slammed us down with the- I'm going to assume it's okay. I think we're coming back. I think we're coming back. I think we're coming back. Are we are we working here? One one second there, Pat. We're having some technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, you're okay. Zap! They got Zap. you. Right? They, they, they got like us. <laughs> they got us. I think we're back. I think we're back. Sorry about yep. that, folks. It but sounds, uh, it, it looks like we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we're back. So you're absolutely right. And and to summarize what you were saying, you know, the convoy is just how it's getting worse. When in reality, there are so 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 many issues in this country that need to be addressed. And I'm hoping that we can take the aftermath of this convoy and bring it back to that anti-establishment energy and really start to knock down all of these globalist policies that are just crushing us out here and just don't make any sense. And they, it's clearly against the people. And I, th- I love the common sense argument against the um, or the pro gas argument, too, which is, guys, we live in a big, cold country. You know, uh, we need gas. OK, there's a lot of farming that happens here. We need gas. You you are you are just so absent minded and dishonest if you don't think that we need oil and gas. Uh, but I do want to focus focus on a few topics here. Um, when did you first get a, accused of being a Fed or controlled opposition? Because I, I really love these stories. And recently I got called a Fed and uh, Jeremy McKenzie was, has been accused of being a Fed. And our, our sort of theory is they do that because we're being successful and like the racist labels haven't worked. So they're like, okay, let's call them a fed. Like maybe that will work. And unfortunately it does work with some people, you know, like maybe these trolls in the chat have, uh, unfortunately you guys have been tricked into believing that we're these feds based on like zero evidence, just because some Twitter user nine one seven said, uh, Oh, Oh, oh my God. Uh, Pat King's a fed. Oh my God. I, I believe it because he posted like some out of context clip, which is yeah. exactly what leftists do. But anyway, when was the first time that you got accused of, uh, of being controlled right, right from the right from the get-go right from when we started back in 20 and 2019 when we did our first uh, our first roll across the country mm. um it, it happens because when you start gathering momentum in it and and this is where my education comes in when you start gathering momentum within an organization and they start getting voices out there you always have the opposition and the opposition has to hit you in any way possible to try and debunk what you're doing to try and draw back the the popularity or the trendiness 
Yep. Um, it's on, never, on it's ne sorry, it's never to argue your points or to That's disprove right. what you're saying. It's always to just dismiss your character entirely um, so people don't listen to you or want to disassociate and dehumanize you, anything they can to just kind of just brush you aside entirely. It's the same thing with calling someone racist and all that. Exactly, yeah, and 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 that's just because, and I say it all the time, when you get attacked the most, it's because you're over the target. You know, yeah. most most uh, in a in a air campaign, uh, you get the most flack when you're over the target. So we, we dealt with those little experiences, and then we actually got dealt with um, – <laughs> with CBC and we knew what they were about to do and how they were going to misconcept uh misconstrue the whole uh the whole this, interview this is united we roll yeah, yeah. okay yeah. yeah so the the descriptive words that they used as they interviewed you I watched the one lady when I did a radio interview hit the cough button while she screamed at me to get me to lash back out at her and uh and I saw all these inner workings of the media and how they smear you or try and get some kind of, you know, some kind of engaging rant out of you so that they can focus on that when they give you, you know, the 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 sheeple, their mm -hmm. their dose of medicine every night at six o'clock. They're they're really clever too. Like to give them credit, you know, I know that it's very cheap and and they're evil, but it's like they are quite good at what they do and, and you know, they'll get you to do a passionate rant and then they'll take like five seconds. That's and they'll right. be like, that's what this person is. It's that five seconds. And and but to set up this interview, you were telling me, because uh, this is going to fast forward after the convoy, you got featured in a fifth estate uh, Ooh. special, Ooh, <laughs> scary music, some concerned white woman who's like, Pat King, Pat King, what's, what, uh, what's gone wrong? And you told me that the conversation, you have it recorded on your Facebook, is 140 minutes over two hour conversation. Yeah. And they took like a 10, 10 second clip. They to took make... five minutes, yeah, and they smeared it as best as they could. Uh, right. I actually schooled them in that. I record everything for um, for my own purposes, so that in case there's ever a situation, I've got you on camera. And uh, and exactly, and and that's the way I have to live. You know, they've gone as far as calling you know my family members Antifa. They've gone as far saying we're Jewish police officers. You know, they they've got. I don't even know where people get their their mentality. But they're mm -hmm. definitely proving that the 80% of the majority of people are so stupid, they don't even have the one iota of a brain cell to stand up and say something's wrong. And this is one technique that, and these, these are CIA proven. So MK Ultra programs, destabilization of, of, uh, of, of foreign uh, governments. This is yep. how they do it. And the worst part is, is I can't be bought. I never will be bought. I am a Canadian true and true. And I'm an Albertan. And we're strong, we're per we persevere, and we're resilient. And I will never give up. And so what do they do? They tried the racist card, can't play that one anymore. You tried the other ones, can't play that one anymore. So now what they've done is gone in and, and infiltrated the weak-minded within the movement. The ones that are already half-snapped, should be on meds, but aren't because they refuse to, to take medication. And I understand that. But uh, they're the ones now that are being influenced to believe every rumor in the book. And he said this and she said that. Remember the telephone game, Greg, when you're in kindergarten and you tell somebody what your teacher told you in your ear and you had to pass it along. And by the time it got to the like eighth, third or fifth person, it was already gone. You couldn't you don't know the true story of it. Well, that's mm -hmm. what now people are going off of. Now they're going off of rumor mills that are five years old, six years old, that some Joe Schmo got uh, got told because they didn't like me or they had a problem with me and that's that's where we're at it's cancel culture from both sides but i yep. do know from my background when you're dealing with organizations so ladies and gentlemen i have a background uh, a degree in organizational behavior i also have a degree in occupational health safety and environment so this is how i'm able to tell everybody masks don't work i'm able to tell everybody that COVID is a lie I'm actually able to file documents to the courts that, albeit weren't successful, now they're coming out to be successful. Imagine that. Um, but, you know, these are things that people don't know about me, and then when they find out about me, they don't want those, don't want other people to know that Mr. King's actually very well ed educated, very well traveled, and, and, and very well seasoned. I've been on the boots on the ground. I've been a, a, a ditch, a ditch uh, digger. I've been a, a roughneck on the rigs. And I worked my way all the way up to a former um, a frontline supervisor in the oil and gas and an, uh, and a flowback specialist. 
as well as educated. I got a three-year degree from the University of Alberta and a one-year degree from uh, Mount Royal University in Calgary. So I'm not dumb by no means. And no matter if you hate me, that's fine. But don't lose sight of what this what is going on here. Mm. Focus on the goal, folks. Keep your eye on the ball. Keep exactly. your eye on the ball. That's exactly right. And I want to I want to talk about that and be very frank with you here, uh, Pat. Yeah. You know, when the convoy was happening, I I think I'd heard of you before, and I heard about like the clips of you know you saying like something about bullets or something about uh, you know Ang- Anglo-Saxon bloodline. Yeah. I'm a right wing guy, so I didn't think much of it. I thought, oh, they're probably trying to smear this guy. But I think just by having all of that kind of noise go on, it did add uncertainty to me where I'm like, oh, like, I don't know this Pat King guy, you know, like, do I want to go out of my way to endorse him or whatever? It's like, well, I, I don't know him. And like, there's all this heat on him for some reason. So I guess what my point is, is like, it's not just the people who are, who should be on meds, <laughs> who are believing in these lies. Like, like it really is. Um, it really does work in, in very kind of other subtle ways. Uh, and we saw this, I've seen this as well with uh, someone like Jeremy McKenzie, where he's made some, you know, controversial statements in the past and they'll take those clips and they'll popularize those clips and they'll be right wingers. They'll be freedom fighters who are like, I agree with every single thing Jeremy says about the convoy, about freedom, about veterans, about blah, 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 blah. But he said this one thing and now I don't care if he rots in jail. Like they don't say that like verbatim, but but it's like their attitude shifts to where it's like, well, well, I I love freedom and everything and and, and all that. But, you know, he said this one thing that one time. So actually, I'm not going to support him anymore. And more and more, I feel that politics is not so much about ideology. It's not so much about, you know, our values. It, It is in a big sense. But more and more, I'm seeing this kind of war for power and information. It's 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 like what you believe. And a lot of that is manipulated by lies. They try to lie to you and say climate change is real. They try to lie to you and say, no, no, oh, no, uh, packing yeah. is a Fed or packing is this. And that is such a major part of the operation here because sometimes our b- biggest, best champions, like the dissidents from the convoy, yourself included, Jeremy McKenzie and Arthur Pawlowski, uh, get smeared the worst. And it's like, uh, it looks like the lies are the biggest, uh, the biggest, most effective tool that uh, is, is being just like used against us here. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, what is the craziest thing that the craziest smear that like you heard about yourself? Because like you said, it's like telephone, right? Yeah. Um, like just like just let's have some fun here because I'm sure it's like really crazy. Like, you know, obviously white supremacist, blah, blah, blah. But is there any other insane things that you've been accused of uh, through the telephone game? Oh, man. Uh, what, where do you start? There's so <laughs> many. And it, and it all derives from people that I've caught um, stealing or I've caught lying or Mm. I've caught doing something in this movement. And then, you know, I call them out on their shit. So then they go and spread a rumor. Mm. So I've been called a, um, what do they call it? Uh, stolen valor is, is how it goes. Um, so now, now I'm uh, faking to be a veteran and, and I'm going to touch this because these are the comments in here too. So let's shut these people up at the same time. I made a joke at one time that I lost my leg in a foxhole in Afghanistan with Chuck Norris. Literally. <laughs> and this Literally. is this sitting is the, the origin. Bar, sitting at the bar in in fucking in uh, in Arm Prior when we did our first convoy. I made a joke about it, and then it went too too far because what happened was we end up starting to help this veteran by the name of Martin Brasseau. He actually stalks us and finds us at Fort McMurray. And I start helping him and getting him off the streets because he's on the streets. I mm-hmm. start telling him, you know what, man, we'll help you get uh, get an apartment and get, you know, mm-hmm. this is what we're going to do for you. And then mm-hmm. I find out that he actually tried to light his family on fire. He beat his wife. He choked his kids by the throat. Uh, he tried to light his house on fire. So I ousted him. I ousted him. I called him out. And I said, I can't have anything to do with you, man. You're going to, you know, people are going to be like you're supporting a guy who tried to kill his his family. And I had to back away. Oh, and then all of a sudden, well, now now that I'm trying to say that I'm a vet. So this is how he retaliated. He retaliated by trying to spread lies. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all bullshit. And when I was on, I actually help veterans as much as I can in any way possible all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Jeff Glode was another gentleman who is very PTSD. He got battlefield injured. 
and I was trying to help him get another, get a dog. Mm -hmm. So uh, a new dog for him. And actually we did get the dog for him folks. So congratulations to everybody out there, but he got told that this, this rumor was going around and Jeff is very off the wall. He's, he's medicated. He's, he's got issues. And, uh, and Jeff ended up apologizing after for, for trying to, you know, um, say that this was true, but it wasn't. I've talked to him since many times. I've seen the new dog as well. Uh, Sean Arnston was another vet because I help all these vets. I try and do things. I ended up taking Sean Arnston, flying him all the way to Ottawa, uh, letting him go to beat, not letting him, but taking him to Beechwood Cemetery so he can see some of his fallen, uh, fallen, uh, you know, brothers that Brother, he lost yeah. over in Afghanistan. And uh, then everybody tried to say that it was, uh, you know, that I'm, a, I'm trying to be a vet. And I never once, I've always, my heart has always gone out to our veterans because they go and fight another man's war. Every vet out there that goes and fights in battle isn't fighting for the rights and freedoms of our countries. They're fighting for somebody else's. So who's going to fight for them here in Canada? It better be one of us because that's the lowest amount of respect that we can show them. These vets have fought for us. So all of that aside, um, you know, that's where that rumor comes from. And it, it's been put to rest, but people just don't, they don't seem to know how to how to, you know, find their own focus. They'd rather focus negatively on something else. They'd rather because here's the, here's where it is. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna hurt your freaking feelings, and I apologize. Not really, but it's true. Somebody has to says it. Say it. People have the attention span of a freaking goldfish. Seventy five seconds, you lose your train of thought. You lose what articles you were reading and all of that. That's all by design. Not only that. When you do that, folks, your brain has been taught since 2000 by all the TV you watch, reality TV shows, Survivor, Big Brother, all of that, big hot shows. You were taught how to lie, cheat, and steal and how to mm. be the best friend to that person as you did it. You were mm. taught how to smear somebody behind their back but turn around and look them straight in the face with a big old smile on your face. Just to get ten thousand dollars, or just to get a thousand dollars here, and they're probably doing this, Greg. They're probably paying these people. Here's a thousand mm. bucks. Smear the guy, because people will sell their firstborn child for ten thousand dollars. You're sick. People are sick in this world, and we need to fix them. We need. We need. They need help. And that's, I'm, what, I, that's what I'll society's get... been raised on. Society's been raised on two generations, almost three generations now of how to smear your friends, how to blackmail, how to hmm. backstab, how to do whatever you can to get what you need for yourself. And this this keyboard wizarding shit where you think you're tough behind a keyboard, back in my day, son, you got punched in the friggin' mouth. You got up, you shook his hand, said, don't do that again. And there's not enough of that in this world. We're lacking in that area. Wow, that is that is very profound. I, I've... You know, I grew up watching reality TV. My parents still watch Survivor. Bless their souls. Bless their hearts. Uh, I hope God saves them. But I, that's that's a very insightful take. I've never heard that before. And, and I think you're totally right. It, it's, it, it may not be necessarily coaching people to do that, but at the very least, it's normalizing that and that's saying, right. hey, yeah, manipulating the people around you to get what you need or to like win a million dollars. There definitely is a very kind of uh, sinister undertone to that sort of programming and that sort of TV. And I think the key with all we're talking about, we do need discernment. You know, we need to be able oh, to absolutely. discern like who who is our people, who is not our people, because unfortunately, there's a lot of fucking liars out there. There's a lot of people. Yeah. There's a lot of subversive people who are trying to trick us. And uh, the opportunity in Canada is I feel like they are, are kind of outing themselves. I feel like Canada is kind of amateur. I feel like if you look closely, it's kind of obvious who the we're subversive babies. people are. We're babies on the scale of this. Like if you even mm -hmm. look at the, the, the lifespan of our country. We're still in diapers next to the rest of the west of the world. It's so true. we're learning all of these in, in, in real time. Uh, I see yeah. somebody who says, uh, Pat, Freedom Convoy token. What happened to the money? All right. You want to touch that one? Reach out to Mr. Owen Swiderski and find out what he did with it. That was Owen Swiderski. Slapped my name on it and uh, called it his own. I helped promote it. We have all the proof of where it is and where it went. So talk to Owen Swiderski. I'm not allowed to. All right. 
Um, I, I, I don't know about that one. There's so much I would love to talk about speaking of subversion, speaking of all this, uh, related to the convoy and the different characters, but we can't talk about that, unfortunately, cause it, cause your legal stuff. Um, yeah. but it's, it's been good. We're going to talk about the fundraiser again, but I want to talk about, uh, the smears that came against you, uh, Ooh, because boy, yeah. you know, it was this, like, I have a story at the trucker convoy. Okay. There's this auto, there's this employee who works at one of the hotels in Ottawa. And I was just kind of talking to them after doing interviews all day. And we like, they, they were making small talk. And I'm like, Oh, like, what, what have you heard about the convoy? What have you heard about the protest? And, uh, they're immediately like, Oh yeah, it's about this guy named Pat King. And I was immediately, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like out of everything you've heard, nothing about mandates, nothing about vaccine passports, nothing about people losing their jobs, nothing about like the, this medical operation being forced onto people. Oh no, uh, Pat King. And he said something about like Anglo-Saxons. And it's like, what? And I, and I had to be like, where are you getting your information? And of course it was like CBC, CTV, CD News. And I, I was just like so mind blown that one of the first things that like normie Ottawa people or anybody watching CBC heard was, oh yeah, Pat King. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and like, you know, not, not to say that it's, you know, you're a very charming guy, but it's like, it, and the way I describe it, they had all these lies around the convoy. They had the probably false flags of like, oh, Nazi flag, oh, Confederate flag, even though CSIS does not want to look into the, these individuals who are holding those flags whatsoever. Interesting. Noted. Yeah. Um, the arson that MPs were talking about that never happened. Uh, the, you know, the violence, the steal, steal, all, all, stealing from um, homeless shelters and on all these lies that were proven completely false. And then, of course, there was the whole Diagalon thing being a, being a militia and calling Jeremy McKenzie this warlord who wants to start a race war. Totally yeah. insane. But along with that, it seems like they had you as the boogeyman mascot as well, where they could kind of pepper in a few clips um, of something, something. You said something about bullets and whatever. But uh, did, were you aware of this happening? while you were at the convoy um of like how you were kind of i don't watch mainstream media um i was right. getting rumors of everything that was being said and what was what was happening yeah. uh, i knew the company that i keep and i know people didn't believe that stuff it was all uh it was all garbage but it wasn't until i was actually arrested and then i got to see what people were being told um, uh, on the tv in jail <laughs> it, no well no oh. i wasn't even allowed tv for the first three weeks I didn't even get to watch TV for the first three weeks. What I got though was when I went for my bail hearings, they were showing these video clips of, of things that were cut and edited and sliced into three clips, trying mm -hmm. to portray me as, as what they could. I'm not, and this is how funny of people just ate it up. Like just yum, yum, yum. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, I'm not even wearing the same clothes in those clips. So they were edited first and foremost. So mm -hmm. when you see those, the first question is, well, when was this? When did he say this? And they were they were actually videos that were made months and years prior to us mm -hmm. even coming, and and one of them. So we'll get to that one, lady. Let me just say it really quick, ladies and gentlemen. This is for fundraising purposes. If you can help donate to Natasha.Calvino at gmail.com, be greatly appreciated. If you can't, just share it out. Mm -hmm. But so I, I hear this thing about the Anglo-Saxon thing, and I and I I know there's an entity out of Toronto by the name of Anti Hate Canada who has been mm -hmm. on my ass since I first came out of the woodworks and started speaking out and advocating vocally and, and putting myself out there. I, I, I think I've heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. anti Canada has done one hell of a collection of videos on me and, and that's fine. And then, and they're allowed to do that, but they've misconstrued them. They've edited them. They've even gone and changed my words in some of them. Um, but the ones that they were using uh, in, in, uh, in the courtrooms was yeah, the Anglo-Saxon one. They use the one where I said uh, the ching, chang, chong, ching one. And I'm mm -hmm. going to get to the, I'll tell you what they're all about. Uh, and I believe the other one was uh, something to do with things that go boom. So I reiterated five years ago, I, I paraphrased exactly what Matt Muda Dimajad had done at the United Nations conference when he came in with a stack of books explaining everything on 9-11 that every intelligence agency has had. And he was, he was pissed off and mad. And, and if you want, go back and Google it. You'll watch all the representatives from the United States, Canada, anybody from the G7 countries were running like rats out of the United Nations because he was calling them all out. 
And then at the end of his speech, he said, we are not going to kill you with guns and bombs and bullets. We're going to kill you from within. We are going to attack the Anglo-Saxon race. And that's what he said. <laughs> that's what he said. It was taken out of context? Oh, my God. I can't believe and, it. And I yeah. paraphrased it because he said, you know, that we're going to breed you out. We're going to infiltrate your education systems, your democracies. We're going right. to infiltrate every orifice that the gov your demo democratic governments have, and we're going to destroy you from within. So I said, people, you better, you know, you better wake up to this. Like this guy is trying to oust all the evil that's going on in the world. Yep. And then he's telling you, if you're not going to do it, then this is what we're going to do. And he said he was going to breed them out. So I paraphrase that. And with any yep. luck, we'll be part of a new anti-hate clip together right there. Well, then that's just it. And go ahead because there's a massive lawsuit coming against Evan Belgord and, uh, and Kurt Phillips. I'm not done with them yet. I'm, I'm going for them. Um, well, and on that note, I'm going to play a clip um, when this NBC interviewer asked you, hey, you've been, you've been called a white supremacist or whatever. This is how you replied, and, and you give a great answer. You want to put me in the limelight, call me that? I got some big shoulders. You can say whatever you want. I'm indigenous. I also have stepchildren who are of other ethnic, ethnic colors. So the, big, the biggest thing right now, once this is all over, is the defamation of character lawsuit that's coming towards CBC, <laughs> CTV, and City TV for spreading lies and rumors like that. They've grabbed little clips out of things that I've said over giant podcasts. And that's just how it is. It's called cancel culture. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's it. That's it. It's, it's a great summary of everything going on. And... I mean, the idea of that of that defamation suit, that's that's very exciting. I wonder if, if uh, I don't know much about the law, but I wonder if it would make sense to like team up with other dissidents who have been so aggressively smeared by these guys. But um, you're it indigenous. It could be a class action lawsuit, 100%. I have all the evidence. I just wasn't mm -hmm. done yet. Uh, unfortunately, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I, I got to be quiet. But yep. the things that are going on, ladies and gentlemen, we're not, we may be down, but we're not out. That's right. That's right. So we got to wrap it up here soon, but I want to ask about, uh, you said that you're indigenous and I feel yeah, I'm, indigenous I'm not mistaken. Canada. I, I, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. you are too, Greg. I was born here. Yeah. I guess yeah, I'm a, an you're indigenous born of Canadian. this nation. Therefore yeah. you are indigenous. Get a Webster's dictionary. Anybody. That's why they want the word indigenous indigenous in there because everybody, ah. the United Nations undrip program is to get them to all change over to indigenous so that they lose their culture. Okay. We indigenous. If you're an indigenous, indigenous. Canadian, if, if, if you're an indigenous Canadian, put an I in chat guys. Um, yeah, so that's exactly it. So it, you are, you're indigenous to Canada. I love it. I love it. And, uh, so one last final thing I want to end on here, which is, um, I guess I brought it up earlier, but I, but I, I, re I really wanted to be the takeaway for people here because some people have been duped. They've been duped by thinking, oh, Pat King is controlled opposition because he said something racist one time. Therefore, <laughs> like, therefore he's like here to make us look bad. It is such a weak, defeated attitude that these people have. We've just been defeated by the establishment so bad. That it's like, oh well, well, this guy said something wrong, and and now they're calling us names, so now it's just totally over. But the point I want to make is, there's all these quotes from history that say, you know, you need to defend free speech, um, even when it's detestable. So yeah. even if you did unironically say that stuff about the bloodline, unironically, it's like he shouldn't go to jail, guy. Even if that were true, he should not right. be going to jail. You know. Um, and people need to like realize that because like we said earlier, you know, we're not really based on what's happened to you and other people since the trucker convoy, we're not really in a free country anymore. So um, if we want to win that back, we need to champion those values of, yeah, I don't care if he said something disgusting. I don't care if he said a racist joke. People say racist jokes all the time. Stand up comics, like sometimes their entire act is about race and it's funny, you know, like we right. need to drop this attitude of, of Basically being liberal, <laughs> being, being liberals who are like, oh, well, he said that, like, oh, like pussyfooting around all of these issues and, and trying not to get canceled all the time. We need to change our priorities and say, I don't care about that. I don't care if he said something offensive because what's happening to this person is wrong. Um, Remember Archie Bunker? Remember the show Archie Bunker? Uh, you ever watch that? 
No, why? Did it used to be really racist or something? That was the most racist show out there, <laughs> but even the black people laughed at it. Even right. the white people laughed at it. The Jeffersons, it was all comical. Of but course. But now I've got a handful, and I mean a stack of videos of other ethnicities making those jokes, making mm-hmm. them about Americans and Canadians and wide eyes and all that stuff. But now all of a sudden it's only a problem when an outspoken activist talks about those or makes light of a subject that's very touchy and very, you know, damaging when you talk about it. So you have to bring it to a comedical, you know, a comedical uh, uh, front to kind of ease it into the crowd. You don't want to hurt George Carlin. That's how he did it. He that's right. He did it through, through comedy, you know, and that's, that's exactly how we do it. Life's a joke. Laugh it off, folks. Quit being so butthurt. That's right. And what I noticed right away about uh, the way cancel culture works is, you know, they're going to take the clips they can to make you look like an asshole. They're not going to take the hours and hours of beautiful speeches you've given and passionate talks that you've given. Right. They're, they're, they're No, they're just going to show the shittiest thing. And that's why it's that's why it's so disappointing to see people who are on our side being duped by some five second out of context clip. The, oh. You're the person who hates cancel culture, right? Th- then why are you falling for it? Why are you falling for the exact same thing? Like, you know, snap out of it, guys. And for example, they'll, right. they'll show the they'll show clips of you saying some out of context comment about the Anglo-Saxon bloodline, but they won't they won't show something like this. They won't show you with uh with your stepkids. You said these are your stepkids, right? Yeah, that's Jason on the left and Jada on the right. Yeah. Yeah. And this is um at the broken arrowbullsandbash.com website you explain uh in this video the very long list of uh, activities for kids of this fundraiser for you uh near red deer alberta so definitely go and check that out guys broken arrow bullsandbash.com help support this dissident help support this patriot do you call yourself an activist like do you do you like like what do you call yourself these days just pat king i'm canadian there you go he's canadian I'm well not said. anything. I'm not your best friend. I'm not your worst enemy. I'm just a down outspoken, uh, you know, rig hand, oil and gas industry worker. Um, not afraid to get my hands dirty and not afraid to voice my opinion. If you're an asshole, you're an asshole. I'm going to tell you you're an asshole. Everybody loves your honesty until you're honest with them. Then you're an asshole. Well, I better, but I may as well wear the hat, right? Yeah. And I think there's something I, I'm no, I don't know if I've said this on the show, but there's something very virtuous about being an asshole at times when you can, you know, I'm going to tell the truth. Does that piss you off? You're not doing it out of spite or maliciously. And you're just telling people the truth. The truth hurts. I'm sorry. You'll get over it. Yeah. Sometimes we need assholes to, uh, you know, tell us the truth, even if, even if it's uncomfortable, but, um, thank you so much for being on the show. We're going to plug the, uh, the fundraiser one more time. So broken, arrowbullsandbash.com it's an event september 15th the weekend i think so in a couple september of weeks September 15th through the 17th yeah and actually uh ladies and gentlemen i just found this out we're going to have uh i just found this out while we were in the middle of this this interview we've got the famous dennis halstead uh pro bowl rodeo clown that's going to be doing uh, the whole events for the whole day uh on saturday the 16th He's world-renowned, been at the PBRs, the NFRs. He's been at the Stampede several years running. Uh, he's one of the best, best bull-riding clowns out there. And you're not going to want to miss it. He does a great show. And uh, he gets take he takes the bull on, runs across the back of him and everything. It's pretty cool. That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, you're getting to enjoy a great uh, show for the whole family by the sounds of it. Yeah, and is there camping time. and everything too? Yeah, so you got camping all weekend long, so Friday, Saturday, and then to leave Sunday on the grounds. Um, So camping, we've got kids' events, we've got bouncy castles for all the little terrorists. You all get to go play in the bouncy castles. (laughs) Um, So we've got a big, massive bouncy castle. We've got concert Friday night, which is Electric Lady Land. That's Carmen Co. and her band. They'll be playing and opening up the events for Friday night. Um, There's 40 acres of camping, so lots of room for everybody. Then on Saturday, we've got the Bulls. So the Bulls start at 1 o'clock. We also got bike rodeo games, so all the Harleys will be there. And we'll be doing contests on the Harleys in the the arena. And then we're also doing barrel racing. So you'll get to see the barrel racing events as well, along with food vendors, merchant vendors. Uh, We've got a kid uh, entrepreneur that's going to be there, and Mm -hmm. he has a Nerf gun war. 
uh, place. So he does this whole like paintball scenario. And oh, then man. thousands of Nerf guns, like thousands. And, and you run around and you have a Nerf gun war. So it's going to be one hell of a weekend. And it just keeps getting better and better from there. Plus Saturday night, we have Reed Salmon. So he's an up and coming country music artist, sings Sweet Home Alberta. And uh, if I'm nice. being honest, and does a great set. And then the headliner is Sweet Tequila, who is actually my surety. So ladies and gentlemen, I had a, a secret surety that has played with the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, played for Stomp and Tom Connors for 20 years, um, and 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 has been a for uh, 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 and a huge huge name in the uh, Western Alberta, Western Canada, Western North America um, concert promoting uh, events. So we got mm. to see Paul Brandt with him. We got to meet uh, Brett Kissel and and a few Amazing. more and. This guy is coming out to do one hell of a show. So Sweet Tequila will be uh, the headliner for Saturday night. And then uh, Sunday will be just same thing, uh, closing ceremonies and uh, thanking everybody for being there. There's also an auction. Uh, sorry, there's also a free giveaway for a $27,000 uh, jacuzzi that was donated by R&B uh, Plumbing and Heating out of Lloyd Minster. So there's tickets on our webpage. You can get them for uh, bumper stickers for $100 a ticket. There's limited tickets that are, are limited bumper stickers made so there's 420 420 stickers that are made and it's a uh, hundred dollars and you get entered for the free giveaway of the jacuzzi so if you want wow. in on that go to my page go to facebook check it out well we got one hundred and seventy thousand dollars that i have to come up with and i i only get disability for my leg from my work accident i had a work accident uh back in 2007 and i decided to cut my leg off back in 2014 because the pain was just too great. So oh, wow. um, I'm on disability. This is what I get. Um, and then that's all I have coming in. And I don't have my bank accounts, but if I had my bank accounts, we'd be able to, you know, pay some of the portions off, but they, they refuse to give me my bank accounts. And, uh, really? ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what it's like to not have your bank account or have the ability to, to make financial transactions, come spend a freaking day in my shoes. You worried if I'm a controlled op, come spend a day in my shoes. You wonder if I'm a racist, come spend a day in my shoes. That's that's the truth. Uh, my life is hell. And albeit I stuck my neck out there for everybody out there. Absolutely, I did. 100%. I also stuck it out there for myself. And I stuck it out there for my kids. Because I'm also a father. And I'm also a stepfather. And, uh, and I'm just a Canadian who's sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's over. I'm done. <laughs> well, hey, man, we are right there with you. And you're making a great, great effort here with this fundraiser. And I hope that people come out of the woodwork to support you in droves. <laughs> but we are we are right there with you, Pat King. One more time, if you can't make it out to Alberta to this amazing event, you can also send Pat King's lawyer a direct e-transfer right here, Natasha. Cal Calvinho. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Calvino. At Calvino at gmail yeah. sorry at gmail.com and the password is ottawa and that is to make sure that it's the money pools for pat king by putting in yeah. the putting in that password so make sure you put that in there thank you so much again pat king all the information to help uh, with your fundraiser is in the link below broken arrow bulls and bash.com or sending an e-transfer to his lawyer pat thanks so much for fighting for us and standing up for us uh, is there anything else you want to say before we get going here uh, just remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you hear the rumors about somebody, remember there's rumors pointing right back at you. When you're pointing fingers at somebody, there's three fingers pointing right back at you. Um, if you got nothing nice to say, shut your mouth. You know, mom always said, be nice to people. Start being nicer to people. That's all it takes. If we can individually live and be that, that change we want to see in this world, then why would you, why would you not want to be that change you want to see in this world? It's infectious. It catches on. Look what we were able to do in Ottawa. Look what we were able to do to 27 countries around the world. All by the power of love and our hearts and bringing everybody together and understanding everybody as individual. But yet we are all united. So that's it. That's my that's my spiel, man. Thank you so much, Pat King. It's, it's great to finally get to meet you and have a chat with you. And as always, guys, it is okay to demand higher standards. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.